Hey guys, hopefully you guys don't mind. I didn't film picking this up due to just concerns for his, the seller's identity and also not to mess with him and freak him out that I'm filming him as I'm picking it up. So just a little awkward. But it's a 2002 Foreman S 450cc engine, 4x4, with you can switch it between two wheel drive and four wheel drive, which works awesome. Tested it out before I bought it. It needs some some good love, and we'll get into it here in a bit. All right. One of the thir first things we're going to do with this ATV is we're going to take a look at the original carb and see how it looks. He said he took this off and replaced it with an OEM one, or not an OEM, but an aftermarket Amazon one, he said. So we're gonna go through this and see how bad this is, because I personally think if you can save an original carb, the original Key Hines, I think is how you say it. K-E-I-H-I-N, yeah, Key Hine, or however you say it. You're better off with that than the aftermarket junk that you can get from Amazon so that's what I'm trying to do right now so we're gonna go through the normal process of removing the bowl inspecting the jets pulling the jets out getting them and soaking in the ultrasonic cleaner I'll probably let them soak in the ultrasonic cleaner for quite a bit ooh ooh we get some light on this situation Yeah, look at that gunk in the bottom of that bowl. Just nasty. I cast a shadow too much. All right, let's look at this. So once again, we have this little plastic thing. I think if you guys remember on the Honda Quad, the first one I did, I messed that up when I was building, rebuilding it, and I forgot to tighten it. Or, I forgot to, what do you call it? Screw it down, or put it back, that's the word I'm looking for. And, well, <laughs> sure enough, it bit me. And I had to go put it, tear it back apart. Someone's been in here. Someone's been in this carb. That was way too loose. And why did they... Always fun when you get a random project that you have no clue about and you find that someone's messed with it before you. You always got to be concerned that it was done right. Okay, that's going to require a little punch. <clears throat> see if this will do it. Boop. Yes, it will. This is what you use to like pre center your drill bits before drilling. Um, it's got a really, really, really fine point. That needle is seized in that seat. Yeah, that, he must have gotten this thing apart a little bit, tried to clean it. And then realized it's not going to get cleaned up correctly. Should be a spring in there. Yep. And we got a jet on the side that needs to be removed. Oop, I dropped it in the bowl. So right now I've got three jet, three different jets from this thing. I'm gonna remove all these hoses because they're just in the way. I'm 
might have to replace these hoses on this carb. Just due to how cracked they are. Man, that four tracks that I had. Whoop! <laughs> Through my life. That four tracks I had was a really nice bike. And the whole reason that, well, I no longer have it is because I thought, you know, I don't need an ATV that much. Well, I sold it and then within a day I was like, crap. I use it like every day when I'm at my house. I do use it and I could, I could need it. So I went and got a different one. <clears throat> this one was actually fairly well priced. Gonna keep that in there. And there is an O-ring right there. It goes like that. So O-ring, little adapter, it looks like from Honda. It's that and the choke. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove that because I wanna clean out the choke. He actually just, I think he just put in the new one there. And that looks like it for the bottom so now we're gonna get the cone off which I think he's been in because these are way too loose yeah that's that one's a bit stripped <coughs> yeah I think that this will be fine. This will turn out fine just because I noticed the the jet or the seat was seized and the um, the needle was seized in, was seized in the seat. So I think it'll be fine that we uh, will be able to salvage this carb. Feels nice and good. Look at the diaphragm, make sure that you don't see any holes in the diaphragm. The needle looks solid. Yeah. So we're gonna dunk all this stuff in it, in the ultrasonic cleaner. And then we will be back. I mean, yeah. You guys don't need to see me do this. Alrighty. This carb is soaked through it. I'm going to just blow it off a little off screen with air. So that way it can get kind of cleaned up and all this uh, chem dip is going to get off of it. So you can notice my tank isn't deep enough and you can see on this side, oop, am I even in the picture? Yeah, on this side, it's a little grungy versus this side's a lot cleaner. I got some pretty clean, I'm just gonna hit it with. Do a final good clean on that thing. And we'll take a look at our little jets and everything. And one last thing. Hot, 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 hot. 
Ooh man, that's hot. So freaking hot. once I get all this stuff cleaned up and itemized. Alrighty. So we have all this stuff reassembled, or cleaned, and ready for a reassembly. What we're gonna do, what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna do the, the bowl of the carburetor first, just because this is the one that I'm kinda concerned is not gonna function correctly because of how bad that um, needle was stuck in that seat. Cleaned up pretty good, but once again, it could have been a bit better. And I need my little pliers to squeeze this so it doesn't rattle out. Uh -huh. You should go in there. You should go there. So, main jet, I don't know, can you actually see? Yeah, we'll move closer and I'll give you a light. Can you see better? I, I can't see my screen and my camera. So, main jet's right here. Should be the idle jet, and that's the enrichment jet. I believe that's how it goes on these carburetors. I don't actually remember. I don't think it matters a whole lot as long as you get the jets in the right position. Shoot. I need to get this little guy has to go in the enrichment jet. I say that and then I immediately remember, oh crap, I need to get that in. And I did blow him up. I need one of those like screwdrivers electricians use when they're working in live paint mills. So that way they don't drop screws or anything in it. Damn it. Maybe I'll be better off starting it by hand. It's not in the most convenient position. I will give it that much. And so you guys probably just saw in the video that we just power washed the unit and no, the carburetor was not on the unit. Um, this is the OEM carburetor that he put on or the guy I bought it from put on because, or that he took off because he put on OEM or aftermarket one from Amazon. So this one is the original one that came with the Honda back in the... 2000s when this thing was made so it is far superior to the Chinese ones made now or Amazon ones how I don't know where they're made from whatever ones are made nowadays that are not as good a quality as they used to be basically is what I'm saying okay now we can put the jet in correctly or needle I just can't forget this crap I dropped it so this sits up in the bowl. I think it should sit like that. So either like that or like that. Pretty sure it's like that. So it sits like that on this. I just have to get it orientated to where it will actually function correctly. Which means I need to figure out where this goes. Looks like it goes right there. So it makes on that. Or maybe it dictates it by the only fact that it can only go one direction. Get 
So you can't go there. You can't fit there. It could fit like that. But it's putting this little tab into the jet versus this one is not. So I think that's where that goes. And the last thing is the pen for the needle and seat and float. Okay, that's this. And then so technically, if I blow into here with it upside down, I don't hear any leakage. It flows freely that way. So that's good. Now we get to put this gasket back on. I really should spend the money on a rebuild kit to get new gaskets because this thing is like shot. But it'll work for what I need. Because I don't mind taking this thing back apart. Am I messing that up? There we go. That's seated. And then these are the four screws. So the idle, that's the wrong screw. The idle screw, I didn't count how many ways it goes in versus out, or out from the bottom, or from fully seated, but it's a Honda, it's probably one and a half, two turns out. And I can always adjust it when it's on the bike. As much as it, it is a pain in the rear to adjust, I can still do it. I wanna make sure these are tight, so they create the seal. Cause I didn't take anything out of that. Part of the reason I didn't count my adjustments is because I wasn't sure, certain if he had, the guy who I bought it from had talked about touching the idle circuit on that carb that's on there. So I don't know if he tried to mess with this carb as well on the bike. So it's seated, half a turn, one turn, one and a half, two. We're gonna say two just for good luck because it's probably easier to turn it in, back in versus outwards. And we'll do this guy now. It's the primer pump, I believe is what it's called. I don't actually know, I don't think my, the four tracks had a torn seal in here and just straight up I don't think it was working at all, but it ran perfect. So I don't really understand the function of this orifice. But if I have to, I have a spare car because that replacement one. And then the next thing we are gonna do is we are gonna fit this guy on. It should just slot in like that and then this screw goes in. Tighten her up. And then this comes back and goes over to the vacuum portion of the carb where there's a vacuum pulled. if I can get this hose clamp on it.
Yeah, I don't know if you guys need to watch me fight this, so I might just skip this portion for you guys. But we'll see. Oh, I say that and I immediately get it. So it goes like that. Next thing is the the needle or the uh, throttle valve. Honda's carbs are just freaking amazing because I have no idea how this thing actuates. And then I don't remember which one had the eyelet on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just... Oh, and there's a spring. You guys are probably screaming at me. Don't forget that spring. Okay. So then we had this... These are the two hoses I had. Pretty sure this one went like that. And then this one came across and went down to there, which meant the eyelet goes like that. I'm gonna go see if I can find some hose that fits that, that I can use it for replacements. So that way this carb is sealed and basically brand new. And then I think that's that'll be it for this rebuild. The next thing we'll mess with is gonna probably probably be on the uh, tank slash spark plug side. So after that we'll kinda go through and figure out what else is needed to make that thing run perfect. Well, that's the carb. I'm going to get the hoses rerouted correctly. But at least they are taken care of. And they are nice and... It is all nice and clean inside that. Ready to be used. Everything moves freely. So, be back. I'm going to spray it down with some degreaser in hopes of getting rid of some of this mold that's grown on it as well as cleaning it up a bit with all the dirt and debris and stuff.
I mean, it's a lot cleaner now. You can actually see the littering on the sidewall. And I noticed this tire has been plugged before. Not a huge deal, but something to take care about. Probably going to replace all four of these tires just to make it all brand new. Even though that one's not too bad, that one's not too bad, and the other one's not too bad. Cleaned up pretty good. There was like this moss growing all over the controls and everything, and just, it was just nasty. And the rear brakes don't work. He says they're seized. I don't, I don't know. They're not adjusted right. I didn't power wash this too heavy here because I noticed, oops, sorry. In here, there's that little, come on, focus, come on. There's that little clamp. It's not exactly on the drive shaft, and I don't really want, I don't know if how the seal is in there. So, I don't want to push water in when it needs to not have water in there. But, cleaned it up, power washed it, made it all nice and pretty again. Something that I can feel confident with working on without getting the Haunta virus or something like that. Because, who knows uh, what's going on, and who knows what this vehicle has been through. The display, sorry for the shaky hand a bit, display has been cracked and damaged and I've checked it numerous, numerous times. It is not going to turn back on and work again, so I have to go buy a new one of those. I'm hoping that the, the hours and miles are stored on the computer down below where this wiring harness goes to because that will tell me, like give me more information on the seat because I don't even know how many miles or hours are on it. But, I do know it was a, f a farm vehicle, so it's probably got quite a few. And judging how these tires are aftermarket's not factory, I really think it's gone some, uh, it's gone some distance. So, see it turned out nice and clean though. Airbox, and I mean, as you can see, he put a brand new carburetor on it. But, I don't know if that was the wise thing to do, because the carburetor probably was better if you just cleaned the original one. Sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once. The battery is new AGM, he said. New battery, he said. And starter solenoid, random things. It's got an emissions. Yeah, so it's a 433cc engine. Fast idle, idle mixture, fuel, gasoline, 91. Spark plug, NGK DPR7E. Actually, I'm going to probably go get one of those spark plugs. See if I can get that going. Because I do think that that would help. Um, when running it, I noticed black smoke shooting out the exhaust, which typically means it's over-riched in fuel. Which, okay, that carb is probably not set right for it, which is why it's not running right. But, yeah, we got some things to do on this little bike, and this should be a fun one. I know I've been rambling on a little bit, but we'll... We'll pick up once I get it all dried off and cleaned off and kind of go after it. How many of you were shouting at me saying, you forgot the spring? How many of you were doing that? I'm betting a lot of people were like, you forgot to put the spring in for the primer thingy. Whatever this guy is right here. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to blame you. I, I forgot it. But I did remember it when I went and looked around the workbench and I saw... I saw I had a part sitting there that was not put in. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> with that, we are finished with this carb. Alright, I'm gonna just go ahead and drain. Come on, don't snap. I'm gonna go ahead and drain the fuel because I'm fairly certain that's causing some issues. Uh, cause it doesn't smell good. Doesn't smell good and the engine is just not happy with that current fuel. So, I'm gonna go ahead and get all these nuts and bolts removed. And then... Pull off this plastic, these plastics. Man, this whole bike's held together with like push pins. And this will also get me a better perspective of the vehicle and how it's doing based off of looking at that. 
I also want to try to repair the gas tank or gas gauge a little bit, which would require me pulling this anyway. So. Hanging in the holder there. Okay, I go to the other side. So behind here, that panel still is not too shabby. And then push pin, screw. Last thing, push pin. Thank you. Uh -huh. This whole piece will come off. Ugh. I think I need to go power wash again. I didn't do that kind of a job, apparently. Because look at that nastiness. The whole thing is just coated. What is that? That's a Phillips head holding that on. I don't know if I need to remove it or not. And the engine doesn't look too shabby. Spark plugs look, looks old as hell. I say, let's do this. Let's go ahead and back this back out, hit this with some degreaser, and remove it. Because that's nasty. And I want to get this whole thing clean enough where I'm not, <laughs> I'm not afraid to touch it. So, that might take me to remove all of the plastics. I might leave the back on, because that's easy to do. And the front. I think I can access everything from there, so. We'll push it out, because I don't have a seat. And I'll get rid of all these little bolts and nuts, so I don't go flying everywhere. And <laughs> we'll power wash it again. So, I'll bring you guys right back. So I didn't film it, but I pulled the car old carburetor off, or the new one um, that he put on, put on the original one after I cleaned it. I think it should be fine. I took the gas tank off because the gas tank had, sorry. Ugh. All that gook inside of it. This tank had some oh, some gas in it before I filled it, but majority of that gas is from this tank because it was pretty much full. And as you can see, I am still, I'm gonna bring this back out and power wash that in there and get all this nice and clean. I opened the air box up 
I did film this because I was kind of wanting to, I was wanting to ride this thing a bit more, but I realized I'm not going to be able to until I get everything else sorted. So for right now, I'm in cleaning mode again, but we'll, might take this off, this out here, take some of this stuff out and get rid of all that gook in there because as you can see in there, it's not the cleanest. So. I don't think you guys need to watch me do that, so I'm going to bring you back once I um, get the gas tank finished, cleaned up, get that cleaned up, get that little box area cleaned up, and once we are putting it back together, I'll bring you back so you can watch the process go in reverse. So, Alrighty, we put the everything back together, uh, the car we cleaned, we just cleaned up everything, we drained the fuel tank, put fresh fuel in it. Fuel is on reserve because I only put like a half a gallon in it. I don't, if there was water in the bottom of the tank, I didn't want it to just destroy all five gallons of gas. Uh, so let's see. Choke on. Hey! That sounds so much better. It's almost like if you use the original car, it's meant for. It feels just night and day difference on throttle response and everything. So, I think what we're going to do next is it has absolutely no rear brakes. They disconnected the cable up top on the handlebar, and the rear brake for the foot is disengaged. Uh, I think we're going to take the back left, back right tire off with it in the air and take a look at the drum and see what's going on there. And I'll bring you for that. I didn't feel like you guys needed to be a part of the whole. Oh, uh, cleanup process because that was dirty and nasty. Now that is up, um, all done, I can actually work on this thing without worrying too much. So we'll be back in a second. All right. Well, I took off the cables. Those were kind of stuck there. This is a very soft mallet. I'm hoping that I can get this caliper or drum off. Without damaging anything. Stuck. Oh yeah, here she comes. Here she comes. Oh God, it's stuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch you guys' minds.
You're not technically supposed to be using a chisel, I think, to... Okay, hold on, I gotta shut my phone off. So, pads look great. Drum. Doesn't look too shabby, I bet you it cleans up pretty good. That lever is seized. So I'll have to unseize that, which will probably entail pulling everything off again. Or be better. For a thousand dollar quad, that's perfect. It ain't mattering that much. We'll, we will pull the cal pull these brackets off. For pad, or for the drums. There's two ways you can go about it. One way is by just simply separating and pulling it out. But I can't with those because those are pinned in place with these cotter pins. Not probably the great, greatest idea from Honda due to the rust aspect. I guess they do come out. And these are not supposed to technically be neat. Trying to be persuasive is a kind of a fine-tuned trick. Because you gotta be hitting it with something with more than your purse, but not so much that you damage it. So, you guys are probably like, you mother trucker, you don't know what you're doing. Get out of here. I mean, I've never torn one of these apart before, so I do not know what I'm doing. I'm just making it happen, because I don't want to spend money. Ooh. Oh, my poor spring. I meant it. Get that way. Ha! And not too bent. Sweet! 
question is, will these pads come off? Well, seeing as those have stuck in place, says that they are seized in there. Probably some good old fashioned heat would be helpful. Now, just need to get a 12 and get that off.
This this way. So what I'm doing is I am basically restarting this bolt and the lever so that way I can work it free because none of these are right. Buried, buried underneath one of these pads, or this actually rotor thingy. Come on, get it in there. Make sure you're spinning good. And there, make sure you guys are still spinning, and then put the pin in. Now, this guy. Felt pad goes around here on the back side. And that's what kind of creates the seal for the brake drum followed by this retaining ring for the spring. So the spring has to go in. Okay. Come on, get threaded in there.
Why is you not going on? There we go. There we go. And then now we get to this piece, which should go like that. And these two cables should go through here and match up. So probably. What's most likely to happen? Yeah, just like that. And I have it backwards. That one goes to the top. And that one goes to the bottom. Yeah, just like that. It's basically, I want my adjustments to be where these two are in line and that drum is pulled out. So I'm happy with that. Just get this seated. Nice and tight. And so, as you guys can see here, this pulls in, squeezes those pads out, calls it good. One thing at a time. Get started, baby. There we go. See, so now that one's started. And so is that one? Well, now it is. So now we can just tighten these up. Once the drum gets put back on, hit the brake pads one more time. Now it stops it. The adjustments will be fine tuning. I'm just trying to get it really, relatively close. I think my flashlight's been on my phone. Yeah. 
can also silence it so that way you guys don't hear it and think your phone's going off. And the next question I'm gonna have, or I'm wondering is, do I take the extra minute right now and replace these shocks since I have the spares? Or do I go about um, just do I go about just leaving them? I kind of think I should just replace them because I think it's two bolts. And the axle's down, so if I do one at a time, it'll be easy. I need to leave that. It's an O-ring, so putting some silicone-based lubricant on it would be helpful. Which is what I'm doing, because this, uh, this brake grease is the silicone-based stuff, which is what I've always been taught to use. And I think it does do a wonderful job at helping O-rings and gaskets and stuff like that. Be mindful, I'm taking the risk of stripping and cross-threading these bolts holes. I wouldn't do it if I were you. I know that these are gummed up already. And these are not the best bolts. So, Just be mindful, hammering these in like this is not the best idea. But, yeah, it'll make do. Okay, last thing, huh? Okay, axle, no. Hammer it on the ground to flatten her out. 